Okay, we're back here live in Strata, New York City. This is SiliconAngle.tv. SiliconAngle.com is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, and our next segment is going to be the winner of the startup showcase uh, last night at the big event where they featured all the top startups in big data, and uh, the winner is here with us on the Cube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and as John said, uh, we're here with Daniel Abadi, who's the chief scientist and co-founder of Adapt. Uh, Daniel, welcome and congratulations on last night. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. It's uh, good to be here. So we had you on the Cube um, last year. We, you, know, you came on. No one ever heard of Hadapa. Like, hey, you know, I've heard of Yale, um, heard of databases, heard of column stores, I heard of uh, you know Vertica and these other companies. Um, doing a lot of work, but in that one year, you guys have come out with the product, had a big launch, good successful launch of the product, great reception. You're the talk of Strata this year. Uh, a lot of people are throwing your name around with Cloudera, Hortonworks. Uh, we had the Tableau guy on, and uh, so that's great. That's How do you feel about that? I mean, as a co-founder, um, yeah, I mean, you got to be excited. It's been a huge year. Um, you know, I mean, as you said, you know, we had our, our first product being released 1.0 um, earlier this year. Uh, we just announced 2.0 uh, this week, uh, and we really. Um, it's really so cool to see, you know, this technology that started off as just a research project four years ago, um, you know, at Yale University, to go from there to, you know, this, you know, this this real real product that real people are using. Is it because of Yale University? Because the now the Brown guys, it's like little, you know, just so that people know, Brown, Yale, Stanford, Cal, <laughs> Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon, all jockeying for who's going to have the best startups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's more like an East Coast, West Coast thing, really. Like, <laughs> I think like, all the East Coast guys get along pretty well. You know, like, you know, Stan Sedonek at Brown, and, you know, Mike and Sam at MIT. You know, I mean, I came from MIT, so obviously I'm friends with those guys. So I think, you know, we got the East Coast thing, you got the West Coast people. Um, yeah, yeah. There's some of it out there, too, but it's a little bit sort of less uh, intermingling. All kidding so aside, that was just an inside baseball joke in the big data geeks. Uh, you know, the computer science programs are, are booming. But seriously, let's talk about the, the technology, because, you know, one of the big themes in the marketplace is race to build out the middleware and the technology and the tools at the same time simplify. Um, the demand for the products and solutions are high. So talk about the dynamic between you building the company, the rocket ship, at the same time in terms of tech and also making it an easy to use product and deliver solutions. Um, so sure, yeah, so I mean, it's essentially what we're trying to do um, is take these sort of, you know, ideas from two different and, and very important communities and sort of bring them together in one product. And obviously then make it very easy to use, right? So the basic two communities that we're looking at are database, com database products, right? So DBMSs, right? So, you know, traditional national technology has been around for 30 years that, you know, my com you know, I come from the database community, right? So we've had, you know, three decades of, of research trying to make these things do, you know, go really well on structured data, just, just be able to produce, you know, very fast you know, query results uh, when you're dealing with transactions or analysis over structured data. Um, so you want to sort of combine that community with the Hadoop community, which came much later from sort of originally from Google's MapReduce project. Uh, that's very good at processing unstructured data and sort of being able to sort of go through text um, or write generics or map reduce functions over sort of any sort of any data that you really like. Um, but it doesn't do so well for, I mean, you can do structured data in Hadoop, but you can't really, um, you can't really sort of get high performance and, and certainly not interactive queries on that structured data. Um, so, you know, what we're trying to do is sort of bring sort of some of these ideas from the database community to Hadoop, right? So it's, you know, th these ideas that, you know, that, you know, my research group at Yale and, you know, and many other research groups around the country, uh, you know, we, kn we know we know how to deal with fast queries on structured data very well. So we want to take that and bring that to Hadoop. So that was, that was originally what the Hadoop DB project was four years ago, um, and that was commercialized to Hadapt, um, you know, um, uh, also, you know, more than two years ago now. Um, and uh, and that's what we're trying to do. Why, all why, about the, why the success, of the, why the rapid success? Obviously yesterday you guys were voted as the star hot startup by the crowd, not just by the the uh, event organizers. Why the success, in your opinion? Uh, well, I mean, I think it's a, it's you know, this is something that people need. I mean, I, I think being able to have structured and unstructured data in one platform without connectors, you know, really to natively in one real platform uh, to do any type of, of, of analysis that you would like. I mean, you know, it really, you know, this is it's more than just sort of big data where you have big data of many different systems to help you with it. It's like it's one system for all big data. I mean, that's, you know, that's a message that the people, you know, I mean, it, it's something that people need. They want to be able to, to, I mean, it's it's a massive, you know, big data market is now, what's it gotten to say, 30 something billion? 50 billion. 50 billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ingram was the first to it's size the market and it's still yeah. the most accurate out so there. You know, so it's a major market and, you know, and our product is unique in the way that we really sort of combine the structured unstructured data in, in a one system without connectors. So Daniel, but your, your thesis essentially became Vertica. Did you know, so when you, when you were doing that initial thinking and work, was there something in the back of your head said, Okay, this is good, but I, I got to go back and <laughs> you know fix this other problem that I know is going to emerge. Or did you not see it at the time? No, I mean I, I think um, 
you know, I, it's sort of, you know, as you said, it was my PhD thesis, right? So the thing with the PhD thesis is you have to go in a lot of depth down one subject, right? So you, um, so you know, once you become a professor, you can have a lot more breadth and do multiple things at once. But a PhD, if you want to graduate, like, you know, at a reasonable <laughs> time, not take 13 <laughs> years like some people at MIT <laughs> do, <laughs> like, if you want to get done, you have to find one thing and just go very deep on that thing. So my thing was column stores, but figuring out how to, you know, when you have relational tables and rows and columns, you know, rather than storing it row by row, store it column by column, right? So that was the thing, and, and, and we went very deep in that. We, so we built a query execution engine, a, a compression engine, um, an optimizer for columns, all the way up to sort of the entire sort of column store stack. Mm -hmm. And that was, as you said, commercialized to Redica, and that was great. But, um, but I think, you know, I, I, think, I think you're right. I think, you know, um, uh, you know, from the beginning, it was, it was you know, I, I think even, you know, when this was in 2004, basically, when, th when this all started. And uh, even by then, it was clear that text had some value, right? Like, there was, there was important information in textual data that, uh, that, you know, you can't really store in rows and columns. So even though we didn't really focus on that particular problem, um, you know, when we, when we did C the C-Store project at, at this point eight, eight years ago, wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, a long <really>. time. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, even though like, that wasn't what we focused on, like, it was a known problem in the database community that, you know, somehow we'd have to sort of integrate text in some way, um, or at least more unstructured data. Um, so, yeah, so once, yeah, so once, you know, sort of, uh, you know, Vertica was sold to HP, actually even a little bit before it was sold to HP, you know, I'd already moved on to Yale, um, and then we started this Hadoop DB project to, to really sort of focus on the next, m in my view, like, sort of the way I viewed the database market was like we had transactions, you know, and so in the, in the 70s, the 80s, we really focused on doing very good performance in transactions. Mm -hmm. When you get to the 90s, it's much more about sort of analytics and so being able to sort of do fast analytics, but still, like, it was all on still relational data. And then, like, m my in my view, like, you know, where the market's going and where, you know, and, and why we found it had apt, you know, a couple of years, uh, two years ago, and uh, so I reckon this even before that, was really just sort of once, uh, you know, the, I think the next sort of level of research, the next sort of big wave of research in database systems is, is being able to open up to, to non-relations, right? To be able to handle, you know, text data, image data, um, you know, array data, especially like scientific data, right? So like all the like the biology, they have like these big genome sequences, right? Of you know, three billion base pairs. You know, that's not really fits in rows and columns. That's very much of a, a just you know, of, of that's really sort of text data in some ways, right? Because just like it's you know, A, C, T, and G is times a billion, right? So um, <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of these you know science uh, data sets are also like a big direction uh, for the market to go as well. So I think I think sort of the you know the the, the variety part of the three Vs. Is, um, is, is a big area of research in database systems and an area that really interests me and that's why we did Hadapt. So today I got to ask you because Cloudera made an, um, a significant announcement today with, with their Impala product. For the folks out there, go to siliconangle.com, we got to cover there, the blog post. <laughs> essentially it's about real time. Um, Cloudera is moving from the red hat of, of Hadoop to essentially a, data, a big data platform, and their slogan is yeah. you know, Cloudera, the big data platform. We're going to have Mike Olson on the CEO um, after you, so, but I want to get your take on that because Hadapt um, is, it's exactly the same concept. Yeah. So you look at what you guys have as a product that you're shipping, and what Cloudera introduced. Concept-wise, it's the same thing. There's some differences, obviously, but you know, real time and simplicity. Talk about the difference between what Impala has and what you're striving towards sure. or have and sh are striving for. So, so let me just start by saying, you know, I'm not a business guy. So, um, Good, you know, so you know, as Boom. far as uh, sort of you know business sides of it, I, you know, I, I don't want to speak too much. But as far as the technology side goes, um, you know, I just you know, as a tech guy. I don't know what it means for our business, but a tech guy, like, I love the announcement. It's really sort of, um, it's, you know, it's, it's really great to hear people finally sort of embracing this idea of, um, of making Hadoop, sort of bringing SQL ideas to Hadoop, right? So in, in the past, if you look at Cloudera's history, um, they, uh, you know, sort of, I think they were, um, the, 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 the I think the first MPP database to, to partner with them was actually Vertica, my you know, what we were talking about before, where um, you know, they you know, Vertica was the first one to, to partner with Cloudera and, and build a connector between them. So basically, you know, for, for you know, I, th I think it was actually, two I think it was at Hadoop World in 2010. Vertica actually built yeah. that connector itself, I yep, believe, was it? Yeah. Well, I think they actually had some people from Cloudera, actually. Yeah, okay, right. um, but like, but, but Vertica certainly took the lead on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right. Um, so that was two years ago. So for two years, um, you know, so Vertica was the first, but then we saw, you know, Teradata and Ateza, Aster, Greenplum, they all built these same connectors, right, between themselves and Cloudera, and Cloudera had like five, six partnerships, um, you know, maybe even, even more than that, um, with database companies that sort of allowed uh, you had like a database, you had Hadoop, and you had a connector between them. Um, and, you know, and, um, and they managed to sort of 
convince the market, both them and the Davis guys mentioned, convince everybody that you know this was the right way to go to have to have two different systems, two different clusters with a connector between them, so you can sort of try and combine them over this you know this wire, this basically this network to, to connect these two things. But finally, now this year, finally, it's really great to see that you know now we have you know Cloud Era saying no, these connectors are not working. Right, this is not the right way to build it. The right way to build it is to just directly build the SQL support and the sort of the the ability to handle sort of database technology directly in the Hadoop cluster. I mean that's absolutely the right way to go, and that's what we've been saying for four years. So you know, I, I from from that level, you know, it's um, it's uh, uh, it's really you know sort of um, it's a it's a real. I mean, I hate to use the word validation because that's a CEO thing to say, but like <laughs> in, in a way, like it's like a validation of um, of our measures. You know, of but our so we're talking about platforms now. This is the what the market wants because applications have not morphed as fast from last year, but analytics is booming, right? So analytics is the killer app. Right. Right. So that's what people want. That's the simplicity question. Right. So that's what people want. Right. And, and simplicity is, is when, when you say use the word simplicity, the key thing is to have one cluster. You really just do not want to have Hadoop and database on different clusters, you know, and have to maintain them both. You have data silos, so I, I don't know where my data is at any point. Like, it's just really ugly way to build something. And technology speaking, it's a really dumb way to go about it. Like, it's just sort of like, we have two different clusters with, uh, with like a shared nothing MPP architecture where data is split across each node and you're doing some sort of you know, parallel processing on it. Like it's just, it's so similar. There's just no reason why it shouldn't be one system. Well, we're going to have Mike Olson on uh, shortly on their next guest. We'll ask him the same questions, but really good insight. Congratulations on your success. My final question for you guys is what's next? So for Hadapt and your positioning in the market, technically speaking from a product and solution standpoint, what's next for you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, so we've got to stay ahead, right? So, I mean, you know, with, with um, you know, with other people now finally agreeing with us and sort of trying to bring SQL to Hadoop, you know, we've been at this for longer than anybody else, so we are ahead right now, but I think we have to keep on pushing that sort of, you know, sort of uh, pushing the envelope, right? So we have to keep on, you know, staying as a thought leader in this space and, and uh, um, you know, build new product, you know, so I mean, so I guess yeah. the main thing we have right now next is this, um, is this announcement that I think we had Scott on earlier today, like you talked about the sort of um, interactive queries, how you think. So now we can, we've, we've gotten rid of the Hadoop startup cost. Um, so now you know, we can have queries that run in less than a second. So I think that's, you know, <coughs> bringing that out to market in the right way um, is, you know, is, is the most immediate concern. But then we have to keep on going beyond that and sort of you know, continue to work on, on performance improvements on, on, on our HDK and have some better analytics and, um, and just keep on going from there. Well, we always like to have you on the oh, David. I just want to add, so, so the implications of this I think are profound and, and, and David Floyer and Jeff Kelly on Wikibon just did some pretty detailed analysis on this, you know, uh, un helping people understand the impacts on the existing data warehouse business and David got into sort of how it works and so um, check that out on wikibon.org. Daniel, great to have you on theCUBE. Uh, when you were just a co-founder with a company you're building, you got great success. Obviously the product positioning's working and you voted the, the hot startup here at Strata this year. Congratulations. Thanks so much, it's and been a pleasure to be uh, here. Uh, we'll be back with our next guest. Uh, it's going to be Mike Olson, the CEO of Cloudera, right after this short break. Oh wow, that's, uh, that's quite a follow-up. <laughs> <laughs>